You asked for it, and now you got it. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to your weekly music lesson with Walt. This week we're, we're going to be learning all about the history of Christmas music. So check this out. <laughs> What tune is that? That is George Frederick Handel's Messiah, which is one of the most, if not, you know, I mean, it's arguably, arguably the number one most uh, well-known Christmas tune, Christmas carol, Christmas song. Um, and uh, so here's how it all started. Not the song, but the idea of the history of Christmas music. Let's get it going. Check this out. So it all starts with the word carol, and uh, that means a happy celebration or dance. And the way that it worked is that it comes from the word coraline, which is the Greek word, uh, which is a Greek word. And uh, so that's how we, how we get carol now. Uh, a carol was actually created from the winter solstice celebrations that would happen usually on December 22nd because it's the shortest day of the year. At the time of about 130 AD, um, Roman bishops actually wanted people uh, to, to write Christmas hymns for uh, the celebrations. And this all continued, uh, other bishops started to, to jump in, more composers over time, hundreds of years, started to jump in and write more Christmas songs for the bishops and for other people. And this all was great, but the problem was that it was all written in Latin. Well, Latin wasn't a very common language, if at all, that people didn't even really understand. So the way that it worked is that people eventually just got tired of singing these songs that they couldn't understand and couldn't express, and then people eventually just got tired of singing Christmas hymns altogether. But then this guy came along, Francis of Assisi. So then Francis of Assisi started his, oh by the way, you like, you like my hat? You kind of feeling it? I don't know. Francis of Assisi uh, started his nativity plays in Italy, and before you know it, uh, it wasn't just in the language of Latin, it was in all different languages all over. And then before you know it, it spread to all other countries, France, Spain, Germany, and all these other European countries. But it doesn't stop there. Check this out. These little dances that would happen were usually to flute music. See, look, dude, they're playing flute, creating some music. That was something that you would see in the winter solstice. Well, enter the British government who stopped all this activity at around 1600 AD and said that it was pagan and sinful and uh, people weren't allowed to sing anymore. But guess what? Just because they weren't allowed to didn't mean that they didn't. You see, this law stood, but only for as long as the actual British government was in charge. So about the year 1660, um, when they lost the throne, people got their rights back and were able to sing again. So as it started to get more popular, there were, um, there were uh, crowds of people who actually went from city to city in groups and uh, they sang Christmas carols. And the head of those Christmas carols were called Waits. Okay, W-A-I-T-S. Here's a dude singing. And uh, what they did is that they literally, they just sang Christmas carols and that they were actually allowed to take money. But if anyone else took money around uh, Christmas time, they were actually arrested um, because it was seen as being a beggar. So Waits and the actual uh, choral leaders were the only people that were allowed during Christmas time to take money on the streets and it was due to their service as uh, singing. And so these Waits um, actually sang on Christmas Eve mainly, which, is, which was also referred to as Wait Night. And finally, as it began to grow, more orchestras and things like that and bigger um, ensembles started to play this type of music and then at that point you have choirs playing, you have orchestras and then that's how we get George Handel's uh, Messiah and on top of that we get a big song here Good King Rankless Liz. Um, and so all these uh, 
the songs uh, just began to generate on themselves to the point where now we don't only sing Christmas songs, but now we listen to them on the tape, radio, we send them to our friends, uh, we hear them on the streets, we, you know, they're all, they're all over. Now it's completely widespread where the media is literally all over uh, on the internets, right? Uh, on TV, CDs, DVDs, sending them out to our friends, whatever. We sing them, we can buy sheet music, we can print them up, sell it. Uh, so it's created an entire economy um, and an entire distribution system where now everywhere we want to go, we can express it. And what's funny is that Handel's Messiah uh, wasn't even written as a Christmas tune. It just kind of picked up that way and it's been kind of, um, you know, ledged into our minds as being the Christmas song. So there you have it. Before you didn't know, now you do. All about the history of Christmas, Christmas music. Follow me on Twitter. You can subscribe to the RSS feed. Uh, you know, let me know what you think. And it's it, guys. I hope everyone has an amazing holiday. And uh, just enjoy it. And so there you go. We're going to come back at you with another video next week. It's going to be pretty intense. All right, guys.